Okay, I've brought my score tool in and we're going to start by scoring. And we're going to score the five and a half inch mark, the five and three quarters inch mark, the ten and a quarter inch mark, and the eleven and a half inch mark. Then we're going to turn and we're going to score at the one and a quarter inch mark and the five and three quarters inch mark. And I can set my board aside. Now at this point I want to fold on my score lines and use my bone folder so that those score lines are nice and sharp. This is an important step for the next phase. I'm going to do the top and bottom also, making sure everything's the way I want it. Okay, at this point I can start by deciding which is my top and which is my bottom. And I can do that simply by folding it on the score line to see that these little bird cages are upside down. So I want this to be my top here. And now that I know where my top is, I can start cutting. So I am going to cut out this small wedge here, which is a half inch along the score lines. And then I'm simply going to cut on each of these score lines. Let me flip it over, it'll be easier for you to see and for me also. There we go, now that I've got all my core my fold lines cut, I'm ready to start assembling. So the first thing I want to do is I want to adhere down this top edge and I can simply add a little bit of adhesive across the top there so that I know where I want to be. Once I've got that done, I can start adding adhesive. Now I want this to be on the outside top edge of this half inch piece. There we go. And then I'm going to add a little piece here to each one of these small flaps along the bottom. And this one here. Okay, at this point I want to flip it over. And this large section here that's closest to the half inch flap, I want to add a piece of tear and tape. Okay, at this point I can start assembling. I've got my top crease nice and tight, and I can pull off this piece of tear and tape on the half inch section. Fold this in, and I'm going to use my bone folder on that also, so it's nice and tight. Line up that top edge and adhere it down all the way. Now remember our tear and tape is really sticky so you have to make sure you're applying it where you need to. And then at this point I can burnish that edge if I'd like to. And I can also burnish these two quickly so that they're nice and firm sharp corners. Okay at this point I'm going to build the bottom of my box so I'm going to take off the sticky strip coverings on both of these side small flaps. Fold those in and then the piece without the sticky strip I'm going to fold in carefully on top of that lining up the edges and then remove the top tear and tape protective layer here and fold it down making a nice whoops, lining up the outside edges. If you make a mistake, your heat tool is a great friend with tear and tape. If you add a little bit of heat, either with your breath or with the heat tool, it will come up if you're careful. So now that I've got that bottom flap done, I'm going to take my bone folder and burnish so that tear and tape sticks well. And I have my basic bag done and I'm ready to add the handles to it. So let me show you how I did that. For the handles, I've punched out four pieces of basic gray cardstock with the Label Me Pretty Punch. I'm going to set those onto my scoreboard here and I am going to score them at the one inch mark. And I'm going to repeat that for all four pieces. Once I have that done, I can remove my board. 
use my bone folder and create a nice tight score line on these. Now as you can see these are not in half, they're slightly less than half and that's okay because we want the full length or the longer length on the outside of our bag and the shorter one on the inside. So I'm going to bring my bag back over and I'll show you how I did that. Make sure I have the right length so that I know where I'm adhering. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to add a little adhesive. You can use snail or you can use whatever adhesive you'd like and adhere that about an inch from the edge. I'm not doing the bottom yet or the inside yet, but I want to make sure that that's nice and tight on the score line. Same thing on the other side, judging about where you want them and make them e even. Okay, now that I have those done, I'm ready to punch. I'm going to use a handheld punch. You can use whatever side you're comfortable with. This happens to be a 1 8 of an inch punch, and I am going to set that in the center and punch. As you notice, I'm not punching through that top piece. I want to make sure that that stays solid. And do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay, at this point, I want to take my piece of lace and I want to tr thread it through both holes. I'm going to make that tail a little longer so you can see it on the inside there. So one piece of lace going through both holes. I'm going to lay this down and I am going to take a piece of my tear and tape and lay it across the bottom here. This is going to hold the ribbon down. You can also add other adhesive if you'd like or a couple of strips of tear and tape if you prefer. Okay, so I am going to either place a small knot in each one of these ends. If you're worried about it coming back out of the hole, the, the knot is the best option. And pull that one tight so I can get to the other. And at this point, I want to pull them tight and create the handle that I want the way I want it to look. And then I'm going to pull off this piece of tear and tape and fold it down over that knot. And that'll hold it nice and secure in place. And I'm going to repeat that on the other side, holding that down and then adhering over the top. And this lace is thin enough so that it's not creating a really bulky layer for you. And I'm burnishing that just to make sure my adhesive holds tight, and I can repeat on the other side. And the final flap here, pulling that lace down so it's nice and tight, and then burnishing those areas again on the second side. It's that quick and easy. So now you have your handles on your bag and your bag is complete and ready to fill. If you want to add a decoration to the bag, you need to pay attention to where your seam is. It's kind of difficult to see here, but you can see this is the seam where we put that half inch to the back portion of the bag. So you'll want to decorate the front side of the bag. If you need any of these products, feel free to stop by my online store. You can get there from my blog, Stamp with Jenny. Thanks for joining me.